I've never used push to talk. I just thought I might turn it on for now. Yeah. Inohara Academy, a school located in Tokyo. There, a strange rumor is making the rounds. The departed announces people's deaths. It all started a few weeks ago when a student disappeared. Before her disappearance, a strange notice was posted on the school's bulletin board. It went like this. Dear Ribbon, Hanako will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved, the departed. However, the notice vanished before the police saw it and the whereabouts of the missing student are still unknown. Ever since then, that disturbing rumor started being whispered throughout the school. Hanako must be the spirit that haunts the toilet. The missing student must have been killed by Hanako. The departed might be someone from our school. Now another declaration of impending death has arrived. The departed announces people's deaths. The school body is growing ever more anxious. And so, as summer ends, a certain man makes his way to the school. Is the departed really a spirit? This is merely a rumors, or could it be true? This girl be student to left. Hey, tell me the rest of the story. We got caught off in the middle, remember? I've been thinking about it since... I've been thinking about it during class ever since. The can you on the right? Yeah, of course, sorry. The story you mean? About that, the departed thing. Yeah, that one. Is it really here at school? Obviously, duh. The departed turns itself into a human to kill us. Damn, doesn't that mean we're, like, in danger? You know Takai and to be. They're supposedly missing. But everyone's been saying they got killed by the departed. Just like the notice on a bulletin board said. Wait, hold on. Don't tell me. Remember the second year who committed suicide? You think that the departed killed them too? Could be. That means... The departed's the cause of all the strange things happening at the school lately? That's really crazy. You know, maybe you're their next target. Hey, knock it off! You're creeping me out! If anything, it's probably gonna be you first. Because my grades are better than yours. The heck? That's not how it works! Right?
After that, the student's conversation detours onto the topic of some popular TV shows. They're chatting merrily, the unpleasant subject they broached earlier cast aside. For them, a spooky story about someone's death is probably just another form of mindless entertainment. They're just rumors, after all. The sound of a bell rings loudly in my ears. It must be coming from the school's clock tower. Students are apparently desensitized to it, as hardly of them react to its sound. It's almost time for my appointment. I enter Konohara Academy through the main gate. Then I head to the appointed building on the outskirts of the school ground. Once inside, I quickly consult the guide map at the entrance. The faculty room seems to be this way. There are some teachers left in the office. I ask one of them to call the headmaster, Kanoe. <sighs> yari yari. Emilio. Hi, bye. So you really came? Welcome to Konohara Academy. I'm... Eizo Konoe, headmaster of this school. Mr. Kono smiles, decked out in a flashy suit designed to call attention to the implied amount of money it cost its owner. We spoke on the phone once before I came here, but this is our first in-person interaction. Sorry for calling you here on short notice. What's your name again? H has really done another role when I met with you. Let me introduce myself again then. My name is. Mm. Yoshi. My name is Kazuo Yashiki. Ah, yes, that's right. Terribly sorry. I heard about you from one of our teachers, Daimon. He mentioned your name when I discussed the department with him. You are apparently quite versed in matters of the occult. Are you an exorcist, perchance? No, not at all. I've just happened to stumble into strange happenings a lot more than the average person. That's it. I'm nothing compared to a professional. Oh, really? But you've solved supernatural cases before, have you not? Well... Yes, I have. I just got lucky. I'm telling you. I really don't have any special techniques or anything like that. I don't know what to make of you. Headmaster pointedly raises his eyebrows. I don't blame him for feeling doubtful or suspicious. I got tangled up in some bizarre incidents and have found myself in life or death situations several times. Fortunately, I've managed to survive with some resourcefulness. That's really all there is to it. I'm not some kind of subject matter expert like the headmaster wants. But Daimon is a trustworthy man whose opinion I respect. If he vouches for you, then I shall do my best to trust you. Besides, I've no time to find an alternative. 
especially considering that we found a new notice this afternoon. He pulls out a piece of paper. I take it from him. This is the Departed's notice. There are red fingerprints on it. Could it be blood? Oh, that. I've heard that's mold, not a blood stain. I'm not familiar with mold of that hue, though, however. I open the letter and skim through it. Dear pianist, Hanako will kill you tonight. I'm watching, hiding in the school. Your beloved, the departed. That's the second notice we've got. I told you about the first one during our call. It was addressed to Ribbon, right? I believe so. Something seems to have happened to it. It's nowhere to be found now. The previous headmaster got scolded by the cops because it's gone. It gone missing. Just as the notice predicted, the student named in it vanished. And you think it was the departed's doing? No. I don't believe in ghosts and the like. I assume these kids have simply gone missing. But... But quite a lot of people believe in it was the part it's doing. I'm reminded of the conversation I overheard at the front gate. Rumors about the departed seem to be spreading among the students. And that's why I called you. Even our most anxious pupils should be relieved when they see that we have an expert looking into the situation. Once again, I must remind you that I'm not an expert. Well, play the part then. Investigate the school tonight and inform the students that there's no such thing as the departed. That should be enough to assuage the fears of the superstitious folks. He may claim the departed doesn't exist, but we won't know the truth of the matter until we investigate. I'll go along with him for tonight and see what I can find. The headmaster and I wait until night. Some time has passed since the sunset. Headmaster and I are the only ones left. Not a student or teacher in sight. We've waited long enough. Let's look around. Cool at night's a rare privilege, eh? Enjoy it while you can, Yoshiki. We leave the faculty room and begin searching the special building. We visit the infirmary, library, and student council room. But we don't find anything unusual. It's unseasonably cold, no? Autumn is barely upon us. If I had known it would be like this, I would have dressed more warmly. So... Why is the headmaster patrolling the school anyway? You could have had one of the younger teachers handle it. Really now? Think about it. Do you think I could request that a teacher work overtime to search for ghosts? Nonsense. Since it's a, since I've only recently been installed as headmaster. I can't exactly cajole anyone into doing the job. 
I'm left with no choice but to push my old bones and see to it myself. He heaves a big sigh. I guess being the newcomer at school always has drawbacks, even for a headmaster. Anyway, let's go to the new building next. Follow me, Yashiki. Leaving the special building, we walk through the corridor and head to the new building. Let's investigate the first floor of the new building. We usually lock the classrooms, but I've requested they remained unlocked just for tonight. Inspect the rooms as you need. I'll leave the expert to do his work. He's really pushing this expert thing. Denying it is getting annoying, and seeing that it's not having any effect, and decide to simply ignore it now. Shall we begin the investigation? Let's start with the first year classrooms. Escape to run? Okay. Yeah, weird. This is so far out of the way. Yeah, let's first try that. No, controller still ain't working. Figure one C is a appropriate classroom. Crap. What was interact? Google. Enter. Darkness has spread outside the window. My eyes are slowly acclimating to the darkness, and I start to vaguely distinguish trees standing nearby. I see a girl dressed in a school uniform. What's a student still doing here? Strange. Don't worry, I'm not breaking in. Your headmaster's right here, behind me. Oh. It looks like she's less tense now. Guess that managed to reassure her. She has a mark on her left cheek mysterious mark that looks like a pattern. Is it natural? Oh, um, can you stop staring at me like that? Oh, sorry about that. Aren't you from the student council? Uh, yes, my name is... Himeko Dorio. School grounds are closed. What are you doing here? Dorio falls silent after the headmaster confronts her. Seems like she's got a reason, but she's hesitant to talk. Let's see what information I can learn from you, Himeko Dorio.
Um, actually, I'm looking for Yusumi. I can't find him anywhere. Who's Yusumi? Toshihiko Izumi from the student council. the student council room and didn't return even after school closed. So the vice president is searching, searching for him now. We looked around the new building and the, we looked around the new building and the special, special building, but can't find him anywhere. you mention this to the teacher? No, I thought we'd find him quickly. And now that school's closed, it'd be even harder to tell them. Do you have any clues? Like the last thing he said to you or anything like that? Doryu steals a glance at me, seemingly hesitant to answer the question. You may not believe it. He looked pale before he left. And then he said, the departed is calling me. Down again? Everyone's talking about it. The departed's roaming around the school. They're issuing death notices. Or the person named in the notice is killed by Hanako. Do you believe these rumors? Yes, because someone was actually killed. Would you mind correcting what you said, Doryu? No one is dead. They simply ran away from home. That's the name in the notice, isn't it? They all say Hanako's true identity is Hanako of the toilet. That name sounds familiar. Is that the name of a female spirit? Hanako of the toilet is the spirit of a girl with bobbed hair and a red skirt. She usually appears in those school restrooms. She's Hanako of the toilets for a reason. Do you know anything else? Um, I don't know much more than that. I try not to pay too much attention to it since this kind of stuff really freaks me out. Her body's shaking. She must be terrified. Can't say that comes as a surprise. Let's just see if it changes.
Thank you, Dorian. Um, Doryu has given up trying to mask her emotions. She looks straight at us. I don't know who you are, but you better give up. Give up on what? The Departed. If you get curious about the Departed's true identity, you'll come. You'll become their target. That's what they say. She seems to adamantly believe that the Departed exists. But now I see why the Headmaster was worried about trying to calm the students down. He didn't want more of them ending up like this. You should just go home, Dory. We'll look for Izu. Understood. I'll get going then. Things are getting more complicated. Let's search for Izumi first, and save the matter of the departed for later. Which reminds me, you're not familiar with this school yet. Just ask me if you're unsure where to go. I'm gonna hit tab to speak to you later. There's a sturdy, well-made lectern and podium for teachers here. I can imagine a teacher standing here and lecturing their students. The desks are lined up perfectly. Just that sight alone is all you'd need to get a feel for the school's prestige. There's a large bulletin board here. This is where the first notice was posted. When I move the papers around, I find a stab wound on the board that looks like it was made with a knife. Looking closely at it, I can see some faint red marks. I wouldn't have called you if there wasn't a notice here. This is the main entrance of the new building. The school gate is right ahead. Shoe lockers for the students are placed near the entrance. Hmm. Notices for students are posted on the bulletin board. Students, please avoid loitering at the school. Head home as soon as classes are over. It's an inevitable measure considering all the strange incidents of that have occurred. As nerve-wracking as it is, this is a necessary precautionary measure. We'll come back to that. Rather not die to Hanako. I see a pale reflection of my face in the mirror. Are you tired? 
You look dead inside. Boy, you have no idea. Hmm. The urinal appears to be clean, with no visible stains. It's really clean. The bowl is spotless. No dirt at all. I feel uneasy about peering inside toilet bowl. Even though I have to. Oh, you're in for an adventure. Am I not? This really is a clean bathroom. Kudos to your janitorial staff. Only the best. Toilet cleaning equipment is stored inside here. The way the mops and brushes are all jumbled up inside here, it feels like the entire lot is going to fall at any moment. This is the female restroom, a place forbidden to men and boys. Hmm. Considering Dory's personality, I doubt she'd ever consider looking for a boy in here. She may not have searched here, but... Would it not be inappropriate for us to enter this place? For the investigation. Well, you're not wrong. But this is an emergency. We need to investigate here as well. No one will find out if we keep it between us. All of a sudden, the light goes out. As if Somebody's trying to prevent us from entering this place. No way. Is there something lurking here? Oh goodness. Did it go out again? The headmaster responds nonchalantly. The electricity has been acting up lately. It's not the first time this has happened. I've tried to get it fixed, but it's not easy to book an appointment with a repairman these days. Anyway, you needn't trouble yourself. There's nothing mystical about it. We're not being haunted or whatever you call it in your line of work. Still though, it's hard to see in the dark. Hold on a sec. I open my bag and take out my flashlight. Someone's well prepared, eh? Investigating in the dark is something a spirit hunter like you must be skilled at. I can faintly see a pale reflection of my face in the mirror. Really good toilet bowls. Oh 
only the best. Hmm. The red marker is lying on the floor. Have you noticed the writing on the walls? That this is what they used to write it. Can't believe they've left the evidence after scribbling on the wall. They're going to damage the school's reputation. Mr. Kanoe. Mind if I keep this marker? You want to keep it? Yeah, it may be related to our investigation. This is nothing but a rule of thumb, but... Usually when items are found at a spirit's hideout, they're tied to that spirit. Even a seemingly ordinary marker like this can be a clue. Fine. Do what you want. Investigating spirits sure is troublesome work, eh? You even have to pick up things like this. Mm -hmm. On close inspection, I noticed that there are traces of something scribbled on the wall. I should be able to make out some of it. Gusting. Annoying. Just die already. While I can't read the name, someone's obviously being bad mouthed pretty harshly. <laughs> Just then, the toilet suddenly flushes. Say, has the toilet here been acting weird too? No, I've not heard any such reports. You probably just accidentally touched the lever. While the water was flowing, I heard a voice. The voice of a girl saying, Give it back. And it felt like I had energy drained from my body. I don't think I just imagined that. Did the spirit just contact me? I don't see anything unusual. Was it really a spiritual phenomenon? No, I don't I don't want this marker anymore. I can have it back. Don't you think we're investigating enough here? I feel really uncomfortable. Let's leave. Hmm. Cleaning cupboard, mops and brushes are neatly inside. The sound of a piano reverberates through the building. I didn't hear anything. Must be your imagination. Where's the music room? Hmm? Uh, it, it's right ahead. Come back to the 
those stairs. I enter the music room and scan the place. However, no one's here. See? Nobody's here. You really are just imagining things. There's no possible way you heard the piano. We finally reached a logical conclusion. <laughs> His triumphant voice echoes off the walls of the empty room. Is there really no one here? Better check out the place. Be sure. There are portraits of famous musicians on the wall. Some smiling, some frowning. Their eyes won't move no matter how long you stare at them. Mm -hmm. There's a black grand piano. Did this thing really make a sound just now? Take a closer look. A vintage piano. Fitting for a school with such a long history. Its elegant appearance with the muted polish really makes it the centerpiece of this room. The lid is open. I should be able to play the piano then. I reach my fingers toward the piano keys. Don't startle me like that, Yashiki. I thought my heart was going to stop. <laughs> my word. Sorry about that. It isn't just the headmaster. I'm feeling ill after playing the piano as well. Suddenly a portrait falls at the other end of the room. Too much to be a coincidence. It may be a spiritual phenomenon. I should examine further. It's locked. The door won't open. Hmm. There's a poster on the floor. It must have come unglued from the nearby bulletin board. Curious, I pick it up. Attention Brass Band Club members, notice of change of lead. We'd like to inform you that the pianist for the recital of our school song at the upcoming ceremony has been changed. Previous, Hanako Akai, to be new, Toshihiko Izumi, 2C. This isn't good. If the departed's notice is real, then Izumi may be the target. Slow down, Yashiki. You have some rationale for that claim, correct? Izumi is a pianist. It's written in the notice, they'll kill the pianist. And Izumi is a pianist. But th that's just a coincidence. The department doesn't exist. Izumi, a pianist, has been worried about the department. 
and now he's disappeared the same day that the notice arrived. Do you really think this is all a coincidence? Master abruptly starts coughing. His face drenched in sweat. He's so pale, he looked like he could collapse at any moment. Are you all right? From it. I can barely breathe, and my heart is racing. Forget Brandy. I just want to drink some water and calm down. Sorry. Can you let me rest in the infirmary for a spell? The infirmary is in the special building. Guess we better go there. hanging in the wall has fallen. It was right after I played the piano. What unusual timing. If it's not a coincidence, what's going on here? Let's just make sure this door is locked. Yeah, still locked. <laughs> We leave the new building and go back to the special building. Once there, we head to the infirmary. The infirmary looks the same as one you'd find at any school. It's a great place to get a drink of water and lie down for a break. Let's talk to the headmaster in a bit. I want to record my progress first. First file. Sorry for troubling you. What do you want to ask? Let's just chat. I'm, I'm absolutely shattered right now. Who would have thought I'd need to deal with this sort of thing so soon after I was appointed? When did you get here? Just a few days ago. I was supposed to be installed here next year, but it happened earlier on account of the previous headmaster's collapse. I've told you all I know. I want to put an end to the whole the departing situation as soon as possible. Many students overreact to spiritual nonsense. Rumors of the spirit supernatural would 
no basis in reality. Are you talking about Dorium? She's one of them. Better than others. Some even skip class because they believe they may be targeted. I want to clear this rubbish from their minds so they can focus on their schoolwork. It's the spirit we refer to in the notice, right? I don't believe such a belief exists in my school. Assuming the rumors are true, Hanako must refer to the tale of Hanako of the Toilet. And if you believe what the notice said, I have a feeling this Hanako is being used by the departed to attack the students. This whole thing is getting beyond absurd. A spirit is making another spirit attack people. Are we in a fantasy world or something? <laughs> I wonder where Izumi is. Based on Doria's statements, I doubt he's in the special building or the new building. Is there anywhere else? Looking like he's accidentally let something slip. What happened in the old building? No comment. It doesn't have anything to do with this. Can you please just pay no that no mind? It's a sensitive topic. Let's get going. I'm worried about Izumi. Where should we explore next, Yashiki? You're not going to say the old building, are you? That's exactly what I was going to say, actually. Where else would you suggest? Oh, come on. It's locked. There's no way Izumi's in there. There's no point in going there. I don't intend to snoop, but I need to be sure he's not in there. You're one stubborn fellow. Fine. This amateur shall yield to the opinion of the expert. Where do we go from here? The door is in front of the music room. Leads to the corridor. Just go straight from there and you'll reach the old building. By the way, Yashiki, do you have any weapons? Weapons? If we're... if we're dealing with spirits here, you must have some kind of talisman or holy water, right? 
exorcists do usually carry those sorts of things. But I'm not an exorcist, so I don't have them. What an unreliable man. Fine. I'll give you this. The headmaster pulls out a small knife from a leather sheath. It's an antique silver knife with peonies decorating the grip. It looks like a valuable antique, though the blade is thin and doesn't seem like it'd be at all that useful in a fight. My grandfather found it this school, and this knife is part of his collection. Heard it's supposed to be a talisman. Who knows? Maybe it'll work against spirits. You're pretty well prepared for someone who doesn't believe in the supernatural. That's just my personality. I don't believe, but there's no harm in being prepared just in case. Please take it with you. a knife. Treat it with care, all right. It's a memento I received from my grandfather. Actually, we're gonna walk. Because who knows what else we'll find. This should be the corridor that connects the two buildings. The surrounding area is shrouded in darkness. I can't see clearly. There are no lights in either the corridor nor the old building due to the electrical issue. I procrastinated on getting it fixed because it wasn't causing any harm, but I regret that now. He shrugs. This investigation will rely heavily on your flashlight. In the corridor, there's a path that leads outside. The back path leads to the sports field and clock tower. Front path connects to the courtyard. Someone is standing at the end of the corridor. Noah. Uh. Fuck, shit. My head is killing me. Standing there is a male student. He holds his head in pain while spitting curses. Are you Izumi? Huh? He responds and turns to us. Then, he nods. Are you alright? Shall we take you to the infirmary? Just leave me alone. Groans painfully before sinking into silence. Looks like he finds it hard to even speak. But I can't leave him alone. What should I do? Let's 
tell him about Dorian. The student council president, Doryu, is looking for you. She's really worried. What happened? What are you doing in school at this time of night? Apparently, you told Doryu the departed is calling you. Did you just say the departed? Yeah, I know about him. He he. He lets out a disturbing laugh, his squeaky voice not sounding remotely normal. <laughs> you see? The Departed is hiding out in our school to find the One. They've disguised themselves as a human, and you can't even tell they're not human. Enough with the chokes. They're nothing but ridiculous rumors. It's true. You know why I think so? Because I know who the departed is. What? Who the hell is it? But it's too late now. I messed up. The departed hates me. I keep hearing a voice saying, die, die, die die in my head. Mm. Get a grip, Izumi. Why do I have to suffer like this? Shit. Ugh. Fuck. Izumi is deeply perturbed. Our voices aren't getting through to him. Please, calm down. We need your cooperation so we can help you. Shut up! Shut up! Shut the hell up! I've got no fucking time left! I don't want to die. I'm gonna go to the music room and kill that Hanukkah bitch myself! Izumi turns and runs back towards the old building. Izumi! the music room. Does he mean the music room in the old building? Hold on. There's a music room there? Mm hmm It's not used anymore, though. I glance down the general area where it seems to be standing up to catch my eye. eye. It looks like a knuckle duster. I didn't see this in his hand earlier, though. Did it fall out of his pocket? Maybe he brought it for self-defense, since he's frightened by the departed. Why don't you keep it, Yashiki? Sure. Just in case. Every fiber in my being is saying, don't go to the old building. The door to the old building is unlocked. Why is this door open? It should have been locked in the evening. Who cares about that right now? Let's go inside. While the structure is quite similar to the new building, it gives off an entirely different vibe. The wall is ridden with mold and dust, 
Cobwebs are strung up here and there. Forget about clean. This place isn't even ventilated. Oh God, this place is so muggy. Let's leave the door open. After you, Yashiki. I extend my hand toward the door. Huh? That's weird. Why won't it open? It can't be. The door won't budge no matter how many times I try to open it. Sure, but I can just kick the door down if push comes to shove. Finding Izumi is our priority for now. You have a point. The locations of the room are the same in both the new and old dungeon. That means the music room is right beside us. Entrance door is still locked. The old building's music room is just ahead. I hear a voice coming from inside when I walk toward the door. Somebody help! Help! Hey, Yashiki! Let's go! Ah! My hand! Uh Immediately upon opening the door, we're greeted by a grisly sight. Filthy water shooting from a rubber hose has severed Izumi's left hand. The rubber hose is undulating in the air as if gravity holds no power over it. The filthy water issuing forth from the hose is lashing out with menace like a whip cracking through the air. There's no way a normal hose could contain a jet of water strong enough to dismember someone. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's precisely what my eyes are telling me is happening. I don't have to time to debate the plausibility of the scene, I just gotta accept it. Just accept that this impossible phenomenon is real and caused by a haunting. Both the water and hose begin to coil up, growing taut with tension. Are they readying to hit him again? What are you doing, Izumi? Run! Huh? Izumi turns around when I yell at him. The water's next strike narrowly misses him. A frantic Izumi rushes past me and out the music room. The hose disappears into the darkness, as if it's pursuing him. What? The hell was that? I, I don't know myself. Let's just save that for later. Now we have... Hmm? Why do I hear the sound of dripping water? Why is there water in the music room?
The hoses are wrapped around the headmaster's neck as if they're trying to lift him up. This cannot be. Descending from the dark ceiling, hoses have snagged the headmaster by his neck. They're coiled like snakes with murderous intent. <laughs> if this keeps up, his life's in jeopardy. I need to get rid of these hoses immediately. be a tool I can use inside my bag. Mm -hmm. We need to do something real quick. But should I do it or... Yes. Alright. What do we do next? I can use an item in this situation, like... Mm. What do I do with this item, then? I've gotta choose the most appropriate action in order to have the outcome I want. I go. I doubt anyone would be able to keep their cool in this situation. Panicking, feeling pressure, those kinds of things can increase the chance of failure. Using the knife, I try to cut the hose lifting the headmaster. I cut the hose bit by bit. I think I can do it. The hose gradually rips apart. It finally breaks apart with a loud crack. I hurriedly sever the other hoses. The moment I finish cutting the last hose, my knife snaps. Master has been freed from the host's binding. Looks like this is the right choice.
Can't believe I nearly hanged myself when we're not even in financial trouble. <laughs> hey, that'll bring bad luck. I'm glad you weren't injured. <laughs> My luck has always been good. Let's chase after Asumi now. Shiki. Look at the floor. There's a trail of blood. Given the amount, this has to be Azumi's blood. The trail leads to the entrance of the old building, where there's a big pull of, puddle of blood. The door looks like it's been painted red, with blood smeared all over the handle and windows. Azumi tried to run outside, except the door was locked. Is it still locked now? Putting some strength into the door, I attempt to push it open. Unlike the previous time, the door opens without any resistance at all. There are no traces of blood to be seen outside. Zoom is still in the building. Judging by the amount of blood, Zoom is probably. Ugh. One question, though, Yashiki. Where is he? No idea, but. We should find him if we follow the trail. I turn my eyes down the corridor. Fresh, glistening blood extends deep into the darkness. Next time, the stairs. I can't resist toilets. Well, the male restroom is just up ahead. The trail of blood doesn't lead there. We have to follow the blood. We're going in, Seizo. The word annoying is written in red on the mirror. Who are they referring to? This doesn't look like blood. The toilet bowl is dirty. It's obvious it hasn't been cleaned for quite a while. This place is so dirty. It obviously hasn't been used in a long time. I find a pale pink handkerchief on the ground. An elegant, expensive looking item. The initials NH are embroidered on the edge. There's some ink on the cloth. A faint, irritating odor is coming from it. it smells like... Acidic detergent? I'm guessing it's a toilet cleaner. Did they try to erase the writing over there? 
これは There's a scribble on the wall. You suck at piano. Stop showing off. Don't play the school song. There's a name written on it, but it's so faint it's unreadable. This is obviously slander, just like the stuff we found at the new building. I wonder who they're bullying. Speaking of piano, Izumi is a pianist. Does this have anything to do with him? We already know this is dirty. Yoshi. Door tools for cleaning the toilets. I open the cupboard, but it's empty. I haven't found anything I can use as a weapon. I'm a bit worried about this since my knife broke. Same. Let's see what we got. got this. The blood leads to this toilet stall. Uh, are you there, Izumi? There's no response. I think he's already... It's not locked. Should I? The headmaster doesn't reply. Instead, he nods warily, a dazed look on his face. Gripping the handle, I slowly push the door open. The blood leads inside this stall. Yet there's no sign of Izumi. What can this be? This is absurd. The headmaster's plaintive query goes unanswered. I totally understand his feelings. However, no amount of whining will make this situation make sense. Let's examine this restroom. We'll come back to you, toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. I find a fresh blood stain. Probably Izumi, since he was just attacked by hoses. If he's lost that amount of blood, I doubt he's still alive. Oh, the bowl is dirty. Obvious it hasn't been cleaned for quite a while. All of a sudden, a shrill scream pierces the night. What was that? It came from the hallway. <laughs> what was that sound? I hear something creaking from the hallway near the classrooms. A 
a female voice. A hollow moan so faint it could disappear at any moment. The moan is coming from down the hallway. I gotta go investigate. No more distractions. <sighs> It was that girl, Mechadoryu. The sight before me was beyond comprehension. An otherworldly scene. A girl, drenched in sewage water, is suspended by a bunch of rubber hoses. Filthy water and rubber hoses. Just like the assault on Nazumi. Countless hoses sway in the air. They look like venomous snakes, arching their necks into sickles, intimidating their prey. Pained <laughs> groans emerge from her lips. Damn, I have to hurry and save her. I extend my hand toward the hoses, trying to grab her. And at that moment, the hoses just disappear. She drops down onto the floor, limply. But it's not just the hoses that have vanished. The yellow water that drenched her body and stained her blouse is completely gone too. No traces remain, as if the entire scene we just witnessed was nothing but an illusion. Hey, are you alright? Dorio doesn't respond. She's fainted. What on earth just happened? No time to question anything. Let's get her to the infirmary. I carry Doryu upon my back and pick up her blazer from the floor. We hurry to the infirmary. Once there, we lay her down on a bed. Though she's unconscious, her breathing is steady. She should be fine now. Let's continue our investigation. We haven't found Azumi yet. Mr. Konoe? after all these bizarre happenings one after another. I could just wait here if it's too much for you. No, I cannot. I must protect this school, or else I'm going to bring shame upon my grandfather. He smiles weakly. It's obvious that he's forcing it. He's propped up his resolve with a sense of responsibility to his grandfather, the founder of this school. Fine. All right. Let's head to the old building. Or use on the bed, still unconscious. Izumi is our priority now. Let's head back to the old building, Ishiki. Uh, 
Nice how it is when I run in real life. Yashiki. Should we check the female restroom again? We've pretty much looked through every corner. But we still haven't found Izumi. You saw that trail of blood, right? He must be in there. The headmaster yells hysterically. He's clearly tense and overwhelmed. He's nearly reached his limit, both mentally and physically. Okay, we'll give the restroom another look. It's not like we have any other leads anyway. Sorry, y'all, I read fast. It sounds like running water. Where in the world is that coming from? Word annoying is still written in red on the mirror. Inside the stall, a male student is on the toilet seat. A bundle of things are sprouting from his eyes. Slender rubber hoses. They're spewing filthy water in every direction. I guess that explains the sound of running water. Between all the blood, the fallen eyeballs, and the hoses, I'd be unable to tell what this poor kid looked like while he was alive. Though, there is one pretty obvious clue as to his identity. His left hand is missing. This must be Toshihiku Izumi. His wide open mouth gives an idea of just how much pain he'd endured. He probably had his eyes pushed out from the inside by the hoses while he was still alive. Looking at the pool of blood surrounding his body from his severed wrist, though, his suffering and terror probably didn't last too long. It's about the only bit of luck he'd had tonight. What's wrong, Yashiki? What in the world is in there? The headmaster screams and bolts out of the restroom. Guess that's finally what pushed him past the edge of sanity. I 
honestly can't blame him. I'm too shocked to think straight myself. Better get out of this restroom first, return to the infirmary, come up with a plan. I walk towards the exit, legs trembling. Huh? I... I can't lift my legs. Something's tangled around my ankle. A long, thin, elastic blue something. It's the rubber hose. <laughs> I look into the mirror and see something swaying. What? What is that? A person? It's a girl in a wet shirt and a red suspender skirt. Her limbs blackened. She looks dead, swaying from side to side. This is... a knock off the toilet. Hoses crawl up around my waist, my chest, all the way around my neck. I can't move my limbs, even my mouth is bound. I'll be killed at this rate. It's as if I just let that happen. My arm's the only thing I can somewhat move at the moment. Squirrel, go for it. Try to keep a creepy voice. spewing out of her mouth filled with rage. Looks like she thinks I was the one who wrote that thing in the mirror. The hoses constricting me tighter. If I don't do something, I will die here. There must be something in my bag that I can use to survive. and try to read it carefully. I read the poster over and over again. Now that I think about it, one of the scribbles on the toilet stall reads, You suck at piano. That must be addressed to someone who plays the piano. And this poster names two piano players. The hose around my body's tightening. It doesn't seem like her anger has subsided. Looks like this isn't the right choice. Looks like she thinks I was the one. Content of the poster out loud. Ch change the lead. Despite the hose blocking my mouth, I managed to read it out loud. Uh, 
Pull the dirty handkerchief from my bag and extend my hand toward the mirror. Then my wits end. I might be able to clear up the mis misunderstanding by wiping off the writing with the handkerchief. I stretch the handkerchief toward the mirror. Then I wipe off the word annoying. Those binding my shoulders loosen slightly. Did that clear up the misunderstanding? I might have managed to convince her that I'm not a bad person by erasing those awful words. Looks like this is the right choice. I feel like I can move my arm a bit more now. Not. What did she mean by not bully? Was this girl bullied in the past? screams out loud. <laughs> the hose cinches tight around my body. Shit. What do I do now? The girl seems pissed because she doesn't know who she is. I guess I need to tell her that next. Hoping to see the initials, I unfold the dirty handkerchief. Shit. The part I need to read is still scrunched up. I struggle to unfold the handkerchief with only one hand. I should be able to identify her. Oh, I wish it didn't read so fast. Yeah, 
stretch my hand toward the mirror and try to write Hanukkah Kai with the red marker. I exert maximum effort and somehow manage to get the marker close to the mirror. I begin writing. Hanako Akai. This is the name of the female pianist written on the poster. Doryu said she is Hanako of the Toilet. Though she was probably referring to the classic urban legend of Hanako of the Toilet, and not this school's Hanako. The girl who is bullied might be Hanako. <laughs> The hose binding me finally loosens. I assume she remembers her name now. The girl then disappears into the darkness. Makes me wonder if Hanako of the toilet forgives me now that she's pulled herself together. Looks like this is the right choice. Barely survived. What? What the heck? Once Hanako's presence is gone, the restroom changes completely. There's no trace of the hoses, nor the blood, as if nothing foul ever happened here. Wait. No way. Izumi's corpse is no longer in the stall. No one is inside. Even the hoses in the water are gone. The same as what happened with Doryu. It's as if everything was only a nightmare. And that means we've lost any evidence of this incident. The only thing remaining is the fact that a student named Toshihiku Izumi has disappeared. The cops will probably just treat him as one of the thousands of missing people. Exactly as they did with the student mentioned in the first notice. In this case, cops will be useless. What should I do? Better go back to the infirmary first. Headmaster may have returned there. After talking with him, we can decide what we should do next. This is more to let you all see that picture again. Master is indeed in the infirmary. He's talking with Doryu. I should tell him what happened. You're back, Hishiki. <laughs> Sorry about earlier. I was so shocked I ran away before I knew what was happening. Uh, right. Saved her life. Come on, Doryu. Thank the gentleman. Th 
Thank you, Mr. Yashiki. Feeling better now? to her. Probably concerned about her mental state. There's something I want to ask her, though. We can't hide it forever. Alright. Let me tell you all the things I've gone through tonight. And that's it. It must be hard to swallow, I know. But you're gonna have to believe me. It, it, it can't be. Isumi's it, it, been murdered. Doryu sinks into silence after that. It's incredible that you've survived encounters like against vicious spirits before, Yashiki. I hope you'll forgive me, but I found you to be quite dubious before. But I guess I made the right choice by asking for your help. You saved us. He looks at me, a faint, tired smile settling on his lips. been killed, just as the nose said. Doryu murmurs quietly. If you get too curious about the departure, it's true identity. You won't get targeted and killed by them. That rumor seems to be true, after all. Her voice trembles slightly. Is she shocked by the death of her friend? Or is she scared of the departed? Seeing her tremble, I... Nothing like prying to, you know, ease the soul. I know you're not in a good state right now. But there is something I need to ask you. Do you mind? Uh, D, go for it. Excuse me! A young girl enters the room all of a sudden. Her hair is dyed white, which begs the question, does this school have really lax guidelines on appearance? There you are, Hime. I've been looking for you. Did you find Izumi? What's wrong, Hime? Are you? Michiho Kinokawa, the student council's vice press and Hime's friend. Both of you should go home. It's really late already. We'll do something about Azumi. Understood. Let's go home, Michiho. That's it for tonight. Headmaster and Dory, you probably don't want to tell Michiho about what happened to Izumi. Let me drive you home. I wouldn't be able to look your parents in the eye if something were to happen to you. There's no need for that. 
We both live in a dorm. It's only a minute away from here. Oh no. We broke the curfew though. The dorm manager is gonna scold us real bad. I'll let them know then. Be careful on your way home. We'll be going then. Or you bids us farewell and leaves with Michiho. You must be tired too, Ashiki. Go home. I'll call you again later to talk about the case. Mr. Conway. I want some time alone now. Please, go home. Guess I'll head back. My car is parked in the lot near the main gate. The moment I exit the special building, the door locks behind me. I walk toward the shoe lockers, figuring I can leave that way. Do I? Is, is that what I figure? It really was Shizuo panting the entire time. Just then, I spot a piece of paper on the floor. It wasn't here earlier. A short sentence in red letters is written on it. Dear visitor, I'll be waiting for you in the corridor. Yours truly, The Departed. Th this is... I... Visitor? Do they mean me? Are they... They said they'd be waiting in the connecting corridor. I may be able to get closer to learning the Departed's true identity if I go. Except that's no different than running into the jaws of death. I can still turn my back on my fears and run away. All I have to do is go outside through the exit by the shoe lockers. So the question is... Should I face my fear, or should I avoid it? In that case... Do we know if there's a save point outside? I think you can only say an infirmary, maybe? Wait, did you save check just to make sure. Yeah. It's locked, that's right. I really don't want to die tonight, but... God. That human curiosity, you know? go to the corridor. Oh, right. I'm, I'm really a thinker. I have to know more. Where's this bell sound coming from? Head. Uh. Strange figure is standing in the darkness. A lanky, slender body with an unnaturally big head. No way. It's the departed. Is 
this laughter I hear right now? They've set their sights on me. Are they laughing? I can feel the warmth of my body slowly leaving just from them staring at me. If this keeps up, I'm in serious danger. I've got to escape right here, right now. But I, I, I can't. Petrified. My legs won't even tremble. The departed vanishes suddenly. Did I make it? No. They're behind me. Oh. Jules. It's a wonderful day. Let us exchange fell one another. A faint, crackling voice echoes in my mind. What are you saying? Bites you. Oh. <laughs>